So up on the bench tonight, I have a Sony STR-AV470. This is an AM stereo, FM stereo receiver made by Sony, shipped in by a viewer. Let's take a look and uh, see what the problem with it is. Okay, this is an STR-AV470. It was shipped in to me to be looked at. And what we have is we only have sound on one channel. Now, if I give this thing a whack, it comes in on the other channel. So, I can tell you right now, before I even open this unit up, that we are looking at solder connection problems or possibly a bad speaker relay. Let's get the top off it and see if I'm right. So we'll take the top off the unit together. I haven't looked at this thing yet. Okay, this is the first time I've seen this unit. Let's get an inspection to the connections around these ICs because these are real common uh, failures on here. The other one is the uh, the relay, which on this one is right down here. I don't see anything obvious here. I'll reflow these anyway, just because they are a known problem spot. Let's take a look at the other IC here. Yeah, this one here, right next to pin, was it pin number uh, 11? That one looks like it's bad. Take a look here, you see? Pin number, make sure that there's no power to this thing. Pin number 11 right down here. Looks to be that it uh, is in need of resoldering. This is the most common problem on these because the heat that transfers up through these pins, right, you get heat fractures. We'll take the bottom off it and take a look at the uh, speaker relay as well. These were some of my favorite receivers to work on because, I mean, they were just so easy to open up. They had they had cutouts on the on the, the base. You just loosen the screws. You don't even have to take the screws out. Just loosen the screws and lift the base off. Okay, speaker relay is right down here. Let's take a look at those connections. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to turn this thing back on and we're going to just tap that relay and see whether the relay is what's causing it or whether it's on the board here itself. Okay, there's our signal coming out of the out of the one channel that's working. As you can see, it's getting through the relay. Here's the other channel. And the other channel has nothing. So it's not our relay, it's prior to the relay. Let's go back to the power amplifier itself and see whether the connections on the output of the amplifier chip. It's work, of course, now it's working as I moved it. It's definitely a connection for sure. Because as I move this thing around, the channel cuts in and out. I was warned about these cheap Chinese probes. Okay, that, the reason I was getting so much noise is the stupid probe here. So there's our there's our audio signal going in on our left channel. If I turn it up, you'll see the audio signals there. If we go to the right channel, nothing. So we have a problem before it gets to the amplifier. It's going to be a connection. So let's just trace our steps back here, see where this is fed from. Coming in from the back board here, the, the input selector board at the back. Here. Watch this. There's our problem. Right on that connector. Right on that connector there, we have a problem. We have a problem. Let's take a look underneath here. I changed to phono by the way, doing that.
of course I'm going to resolder all of the connections that I find in here that look like they're suspect including the regulators I'll redo the connections on the the SDK uh, power modules because well we saw that one up here that was kind of suspect so I'm going to redo all of these for both of them and then we'll power it back up and see if it still cuts in and out And we have both channels now working. No more cutting out when I wiggle the connector. This is the AM stereo board, by the way, in the front on this one. I changed inputs when I picked it up. That's the AM AM stereo board. Go back to tuner. Also, I'm gonna resolder the regulator I see here. Or yeah, the regulator. I guess it's the transistor on this one. Regulator transistor. These ones always go bad. I shut off one of the lights over my bench because I was getting a lot of glare on the camera. A lot of common areas. Also, things to look for on these Sony's is the uh, ground screws, right? There's usually tabs on some of these screws that hold the board down firmly. But if you look at this, I can get a shot of it. There's one down in the front here. It's right down, where is it? It's right down here. So I'll try and get a better shot of it there. But you'll see that that one has, you see down here the screw, that's the main ground for the board. That's the one you got to make sure is snug down tight. Because if it's not, you'll lose the ground for the board. That's what grounds the board to the chassis. Cause all kinds of strange noise problems. Um, micro locking up won't power up. All kinds of problems are attributed to the bad ground problem that these sets, all these type of receivers had. Another connection I've spotted here. That one right there doesn't look to be too swift. What do you think? Looks pretty, uh, looks pretty ratty to me. Let's fix that one up. Cracked all the way around. That's one of the B plus lines that takes power over to the ICs.
Hmm. I didn't know better. I'd say that there's capacitors that are leaking. It almost looks like there might be some contamination on the board there, doesn't it? looks like oh yeah well there's been some liquid down there for sure I don't know whether it's uh, crap from this capacitor that's leaked or whether we've got uh, something has been spilt in it but looking down the top here I can see corrosion that looks like water has been in there uh, I guess the only way to tell if it's been a capacitor that's been leaking is we're going to have to pull uh, this, this big filter cap out on the top here. This filter cap be, might be leaking. These filter caps, you can see, I don't know if you, can, you guys can see it, but there's some crap down here on the board that uh, looks like it's been wet on that jumper. So the only thing I can do is I gotta pull that capacitor out and uh, see whether it's at fault, whether it's been leaking. Well, if we look down at the board, we can certainly see where there has been liquids gotten down here. But if we look at the capacitor, it, it hasn't leaked out of the cap. Right? The capacitor's fine. That uh, liquid has gotten in there from somewhere. This crud around here, this is the circuit glue that they glue these things down with. It's stuff deteriorates after a while. But um, definitely moisture's gotten in here at some point and corroded this jumper now it looks like just that jumper so it's not the capacitor that's at fault because if it was we'd see evidence that it leaked we don't we just see evidence that there's that this is the circuit glue here but we just see evidence that there was water on the board so I think probably what happened was if we look at the top cover I think we can probably see that something's been spilt on it and there's some evidence on the inside here too looks like something's dripped in here right through here so that's where that's come from that's uh, liquid that's entered the cabinet and Look on the base of the unit, it looks like there's some evidence that there's been something's dripped in there. So um, we'll put that capacitor back in because I think it's fine. It's something, something dripped into this water, moisture, whatever got into this externally. For fun, let's see how this works for AM stereo. AM 144. Moving the antenna around here a bit. There it is, AM stereo. AM mono. Definitely sounds better. Am 
my signal is really bad in here from all the noise from all the lights and stuff, right? So, as you can see, just, just moving the wire around a bit creates buzz. sound. see it cracked all the way around. this one just for good measure because all these pins were all wave soldered at the same time and wave soldering had uh, you know it had its problems when you had it's fine for the small components right the resistors capacitors and stuff but these header plugs were typically a heavier gauge of of wire of conductor and it needed more heat and going through the wave solder bath that they put them through uh, many times these connectors didn't these headers didn't get uh, soldered down properly when they dipped the boards so they give us the most trouble that and big heavy connectors like what are used on on regulator transistors and stuff regulator ICs they also gave us a fair bit of headaches because on, the, on those components, they produce a fair bit of heat when they're running. So they would cause stress fractures on their own. But the fact that half the time they weren't soldered down properly at the factory um, also created problems out in the field once the units were put into service for you know several years. You'd have these problems spring up. So let's power this thing back up again and We'll test it. I'll be testing this thing for a couple of hours before I send it back because it's going back across, across the country. This signal is quite noisy because it's my my little in-house transmitter that I have that only puts out a bottle, maybe a milliwatt. Has enough power to go about five feet. Well, the antenna is about five feet. It's just literally right next to me. I have a better one that was sent to me to test out which I'll be doing a video on that's a little bit more power that I'll use for testing I'm kind of nervous though because it might have too much power it might have too much range on it but uh, at least hey for turning it on for doing uh, testing um, tuners and stuff it'll give me a better signal than this thing because this thing's so weak it's noisy and I want something that I can play my royalty free content through for testing receivers and so forth 
and one that'll give me a signal that's full quieting and not one that's all full of noise and hiss. So I've, I've got another little transmitter module that was sent. Actually, I got a couple of them. I got one that's coming as a kit that I'm going to build, but I had a sample sent to me, which I'll show off in a future video. And uh, we'll see how it works. I said, I'm just kind of nervous about uh, turning it on because I'm, it might have too much range, but I think if I put it into a dummy load, it'll probably be sufficient for my testing without having to worry about the thing radiating too far. I get one that give me a couple hundred feet, then I'll be happy. I don't need one that goes miles, just a couple hundred feet where I've got a good strong signal here in the shop. So there it is, it's back together, good as new, ready to go back to its owner. Gonna package it back up and uh, ship it back across the country. Hope you enjoyed this video and now you know what to look for on a lot of these Sony receivers, any of these Sony receivers, they all have the same type of problems. Check those connections on the interconnect, uh, uh, the pins on the interconnect. Check the connections on the output ICs. Check the connections on the, the uh, speaker relay. And of course, the regulators and uh, so forth, because that's the biggest problem with these units is broken solder connections. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you again real soon. Bye for now.